Okay, everyone, welcome back. And it's been a long while since I uploaded another video to my channel. So recently, someone was kind enough to ask me for the video about how to select courses a month. So I did instead of re-uploading or just publishing the previous video that I had published back in uh, 2021, I've decided that I'm just going to make a new video on this instead. So there's some slight changes, as you can see. Well, not too many, but <laughs> I'm also going to add in some more information at the end that I learned about our core system. So just a quick little disclaimer or notice that this video is obviously not an official source of information from our university. It's only my personal opinion and advice. So you should always refer to the official websites like the Registrar's Office and the Month Calendar for the solid instructions. But of course, at the time of recording and publication of the video, you can assume that the requirements dealt with are accurate. So the four year plan or the five year plan if you're an engineering student is basically this, that you first need to complete the major requirements because in the beginning, in the first year of your journey, you won't be automatically enrolled into the main subject that you are going to study. So you have to complete the major requirements to know what the major requirements are for your subject you should look it up on the memorial website so you just select memorial university space and then the name of your subject that you want to study and then space requirements or major requirements on google and it should pop up you should get a couple of links uh, relevant links to help you so once you're in the major like after the end of your first year you apply to get inside the major like for me, myself, I am a computer science major, so most of the things that I will deal with in this video are for those who want to study computer science at Memorial University. So after you're in the major, you just need to continue uh, fulfilling the program requirements. Like you continue studying more and more CS courses, and at the same time, you have to complete some minor requirements if you want to do a minor, that is. Like if you want to do a minor, it is completely optional for Bachelor of Science students but of course like you can just declare a minor or also remove it at any time of your journey so the main aspect is to get the major requirements done so for example over here is a sample guidance for the first two semesters that you would want to uh, select the courses for so for the first year um, on the official website you can find like there's something like this that there will be two computer science courses and there will be two crw courses like critical reading and writing one of them will be an english course you know, it doesn't matter how well you <laughs> you have performed in your english back in high school you have to take another english course and also you have to take math courses here as well like calculus parts one two three you have to take them all so you can either take math 1000 or math 1090 if you have if you have not done math in your high school level then you may have to take math 1090 but if you did then you can directly skip over to math 1000 and then head on to math 1001 and you can take some two other electives like in order to fulfill the main requirements of your degree you need at least 120 credit hours and to do that you need to fill in a lot of courses to, as electives so that there's some space yeah that's how the university system works so for reference here was here is what my first year plan was like i started back in the fall 2020 and i had taken comp 1000 as an elective comp 1001 as a required major course and then math 1000 english 1090 economics 1010 at that time i was thinking that I'm going to study economics as a minor. Well, you don't have to. Like, you can just take it directly without declaring a minor. But it's better that you do because in certain cases you must have the minor declared. Otherwise, you will not be able to find a seat. Then in winter, I took 1002, 3, and math 1001, and another English course. You you don't have to take another English course uh, <laughs> compulsorily, but if you want, you can just switch it off with any other course that has CRW marked on it. And then I had taken Comp 1600 as an elective. And for spring, usually students don't have to take any courses at all. But if you do, then it's a great boost 
in getting ahead of your studies. So it's, I would always recommend that you try to find any courses, special electives that you can do in your spring or summer semesters. And I got some mine transfer credits in two physics courses and a chemistry course from high school. Like I had done some A-levels, but I did not really complete my A-levels because like it's a complicated situation back in 2020 and 21 with the whole COVID thing. So anyways, moving on with the big picture. At first you have to have the major and your minor requirements fulfilled. And then there will be a fixed set of some more courses that you must take in order to fulfill the requirements for your full degree. And after that, there will be like a buffet of courses to select. Like you can, there is no set number of, I mean, there is a set number of courses, but which specific courses you have to take, it's not specified anywhere. So you can pick whichever ones you find interested or that you want to do. So for, just like I said, this video is really handy for those who have CS or those who want to study CS. Um, over here, you can find like, these are all the courses that you need to complete for getting the major requirements done. In total, there will be around 66 credit hours for just computer science courses. There can be more if you intend to take electives in CS as well. And these are the required math courses that you need to take. And also notice that like I have arranged the courses in terms of um, prerequisites. And if you don't know what are the prerequisites, it's basically like certain courses, you, they must be taken after you have completed something else. For example, over here, you've got 1003. It has a core requisite that it must be taken with 1002. It also has a prerequisite, 1001. That means in order to take 1003, you must take 1001 and 1002. Or at the same time, you can, if you want, then you can take math 2300 something. In my case, I did not have to take it at all. So I just took 1002. And then like for the next step, for example, 2003, it has a prerequisite of 1001 whoops <laughs> and 1002 and then 1003 like in order to take this course you have to take all all three of these ones first it's like a leveling system like level one level two level three etc and the only number like the first digit of each of these numbers represent which year they're meant for like if it's a 1000 series then it's a first year course if it's a 2000 series it's a second year course and so on and as i had explained before you need to have at least 120 credit hours for the grand total including your major minor if you have a minor and then electives etc and recently i found i mean last year and also this year i found that there's something known as a degree checklist in order to find your degree checklist you just go to google and then search up mirror university and then dash your course name or your degree or the program you're studying and then the major checklist or the subject that you want to study basically and then the first link that you'll find is tracking your progress you click on that for example i clicked here and then you will find there are several links over here so cs majors checklist this is the latest version just click on it directly and you'll find something like this so it's a really handy tool where everything is specified that basically these are the courses that must be completed you just Print it out if you want and then place tick marks as you go along and in this way you can keep a track on how close you are to finishing your degree. So this is a really useful tool. Like you need to have 36 credit hours in any subject including CS. And then you need science electives 18 credit hours, 16 in a particular science subject, 3 in another one and then a couple more in some other subjects. So for my case, I had taken some economics courses, so that fulfilled these blanks over here. And I got transfer credits for two physics courses and a chemistry course, so I also got these ones fulfilled. And so for your third year, you just need to um, study 12 credit hours, that means four courses. And for your fourth year, you just need to study six credit hours, six credit hours so two courses and two CRW courses. One of them must be in English and the other one can be in any uh, CRW course. Like it basically when you will be registering for courses, you will find CRW marked near their name. And the best way to get advice about these matters would be to get an academic advisor. And for this case, like I might try to make another video 
soon about how to use the Navigate app. So this what this is the app that our university recommends. You just get this from Play Store or the iOS App Store, and from there you can. Uh, there are some specific instructions over here that you just click on resources and then blah blah blah. <laughs> so, anyways, for today's video, I just wanted to clarify about our course system, which courses to take, and other things. I hope that you find this quite useful. Let me know if you need to know about any other particular topic about your university in the comments. And uh, thanks for sticking by. And just before I leave, a special thanks to Istinab Mahi for contact trying to contact me and i'm really sorry for her replying a bit late to your messages anyways have a good day everyone